Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve Pacific Atlantic Water Flow, lead code number 417. So we're given an M by N rectangular island that borders both the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean. And the Pacific Ocean touches the island's left and top edges, and the Atlantic Ocean touches the island's right and bottom edges. Okay, so we're given this grid here. We can see the Pacific is on the top and the left, and the Atlantic is in the bottom and the right. Okay, so the island is partitioned into this grid of square cells, as we saw. So we're given this M by N integer matrix heights, that's the grid, where each heights at RC, so any position in the heights grid, that represents the height above sea level of the cell at that coordinate. Okay, so any of these positions in the grid, this five here in the middle says that it's five levels above C, and so it's actually higher than everything it's connected to here. The island receives a lot of rain, and the rainwater can flow to neighboring cells directly north, south, east, and west, as long as the neighboring cell's height is less than or equal to the current cell's height. And water can flow from any cell adjacent to an ocean into the ocean. Okay, so we're given this grid here of an elevation map, and imagine rain falls on it, say it falls in this five here, while well, the five is higher than its neighboring positions, and we're only talking four directions, so north, east, south, and west. If rain falls here, rain would actually flow to all four of these positions because their neighboring cells are less than or equal to this thing's height. Remember, this thing is a height. This is an elevation map, and so water would follow the gravity rules. And so since this is higher, if rain falls here, water would flow to here, 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 and here. And it would actually keep flowing. And if rain was here on this one, well, rain could actually flow down here because this is actually equal to each other here. Rain could flow from this one over to this one and from this one down down to that one. And as it also says, anything adjacent to the ocean, so anything on the borders are touching at least one ocean. And these two ones here are special, they're actually touching both of the oceans. So anything touching the oceans, water can flow from that cell into the ocean. So this five here, water can flow down into the Pacific and it can flow into the Atlantic. This position down here, water can flow down to the Atlantic. So if you look at these kind of darker cells here, we basically want to return a list of all of these positions. These are all of the positions where if rain fell on that position, rain would flow both to the Pacific and to the Atlantic. These top two corner ones are always going to be marked because they're literally touching both of those ones. But there's also one, say, in the middle here where water could flow here down into the Atlantic here. And then it could also flow kind of down into the Pacific over here. So since water can flow starting at this position down to both the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean, it doesn't matter the path that it takes as long as there's some path path where that exists, well then that position is going to be included in the output. And particularly, the output is a 2D list of the grid coordinates called result, where each result at i is the row index and column index of the position, and we only want it in that list if rainwater can flow from that cell to both the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. So exactly what we said there is going to be a list of all of the row column positions of these colored squares right there. So for these graph problems, you're generally considering either a breadth first search or a depth first search, one of the two. Uh, it turns out for this problem, it doesn't really matter. You could do either one and we'll talk about why, uh, but it kind of makes more sense to do a BFS for this one using a Q because if you picture kind of water flowing over here, well, it makes more sense that it would flow kind of in a breadth first search way where it kind of gets to all of these positions before it then spreads out a little bit more into the other positions. A depth first search would say, like, okay, start here, let's kind of go all the way here. That would still solve the problem and end up doing the same thing, but it makes more sense to do BFS because it's water. Okay, so we'll use BFS, which means we're going to use a Q. So we'd kind of want to do two BFSs here because we have two questions to answer. Firstly, can a cell flow to the Pacific and can it flow down to the Atlantic? If we answer both of those questions for each of the cells, then you'd basically just want all the positions where both of those are true. So essentially what we're going to do for this is build up two different sets of positions. So if you call it, we'll call it set A here. So set for the Atlantic Ocean and set set for the Pacific Ocean. These are hash sets, by the way, so actual hash sets. So if you get set A, which is a list of all of the positions that can reach the Atlantic, and if you get set P, which is the set of all of the positions that can reach the Pacific, well, then you'd basically just take the intersection of those sets. So whatever's common in those sets, basically your Venn diagram here of P and A, you'd want just the combination of those two, saying you can reach both of the oceans. 
So first, let's try and figure out set P, which is all of the positions that can reach the Pacific. Well, we know there's a bunch of those already, and it's particularly the full left wall, as well as the top wall. And this one kind of reaches it twice, but it doesn't matter. So all of the positions that can definitely reach the Pacific are these ones. And we need to see which ones can reach these ones. Because if you think about it, if you're, say, over here, for example, well, if you can flow to either this one or this one, well, that means you can flow to the Pacific. Because if this can flow to the Pacific and this one can flow to that one, well, then you know that it can kind of chain like that. So what we would do here is say, so firstly, set P is all of these positions. All of these ones can flow to the Pacific. So this would start our BFS. We'd basically put all of those on a queue here. I'm not going to actually put all of them on the queue because that would take way too long. But you'd put all of these on a queue and you'd also say they're all in the set because all of those can reach the Pacific. Then for each of these positions, we'll look at each of them and say, can water flow from my neighbor over to me? Okay, we do not want the question of can water flow from me over to you? That's not relevant right now. We're trying to see if you can reach the Pacific. So can this neighbor reach the Pacific? It can reach the Pacific if the neighbor is bigger than you. So if it was a six, if rain was here and it flowed over here, well, that reaches the Pacific. So it could flow there. But since this is a four, this neighbor is smaller. Water cannot flow from this position over to that one because that would be basically water climbing a mountain. So you'd approach this problem maybe a little bit opposite of what you'd guess, but this approach makes a lot of sense. Now this cell is also neighbors with this one, but this one has already joined the queue at some point. We've already seen it. We've already seen it in, we'd have basically a visited list of stuff that we've seen. And so we're not going to kind of visit this again. I mean, we haven't processed this node yet, but we've already added it to the queue. So we're not gonna kind of consider it because we've already added it to the queue. Okay, so maybe the second position was here. And so this three, okay, well, it's neighbored to two things that have already joined the queue. And so we're not going to do that. This neighbor right here that hasn't joined the queue, we haven't seen that. And so can this cell flow water down to this one? Well, yes, it actually can. Okay, so that's huge. What that means here is that that item should join the queue. So it joins the queue saying that, well, we need to see if water could flow from any of its neighbors, aka this one down to it. Because of this cell, that actually allows this cell over here to kind of have its water flowing through. So this position, the water didn't work over here, but it will work over here. We haven't gotten to that yet, but you need to make sure that when you actually have water can flow from your neighbor over to you, well, then that's going to join the set that can join the Pacific, because that's exactly what that means. And we also need to make it join the queue, because you need to see if its neighbors can then find a path to it. Okay, so I'm not going to really draw the entire queue structure here that would take way too long so these are all of the ones that would join the pacific ocean we would then draw something very similar for the things that could join the atlantic ocean so just to make some things extra clear here these are going to be all of the positions that we queue onto the pacific and we'd kind of do it in the order that i just drew here so we'd kind of iterate this row and then this column or you might do the column then the row it doesn't really matter and then once you were done with that bfs you would put put all of these ones on the Atlantic. And again, the queue would kind of start wherever you started it. If we did this first row, then this guy would be first. If you did this column first, then this guy would be first. It, uh, it doesn't really matter the way you do it. So again, you'd be left with your sets. We'll call them P and A. We do the BFS to find both of those, and we basically just find the intersection of those two sets. So the code is a little tricky, but trust me, we got this. Okay, so as we said, we're going to do two BFSs, and that involves a queue. So we will get from collections, we will import DQ, our double-ended queue. Okay, so we need a few different things here. We would need PQ is equal to a DQ. That's going to be our queue for the Pacific side of this. For this BFS from the Pacific, we would also need a set of positions we've seen. So we'll call it PScene is equal to a set. That's going to allow us kind of to not do duplicates and keep traversing the graph too much. Uh, we 
would need AQ. So basically the analogous stuff, AQ is going to be a DQ and a scene is a set for the Atlantic. So this is for the Pacific BFS. This is for the Atlantic one. For both solutions, we're definitely going to need M and N. So number of rows and number of columns. M is the length of the heights and N is the length of the heights at zero. Okay, let's take a look at our grid here. So let's first worry about the Pacific Ocean. So that's all of the top wall and the left wall. And we also don't want to double count the top left corner here. It's probably not a big deal, but we'd like to avoid that. So let's first worry about the top wall. Let's do that. So for J in the range of N, we're doing N because that's the number of columns. It kind of goes this way to the right. We want to PQ dot append the position of zero and J. So zero marks the first row. That's why it's this row here. We are incrementing J over the columns. Okay, so these are all of the positions that are on the top wall. If we put them on the queue, we also want to say that we visited those positions so we don't see them again. P scene dot add the position of zero J. Same position as that. So that covers all of the top wall and it is counting that top left corner. So now we're going to do basically the left wall ignoring the top left. So for that, we're going to do for I in the range of one to M so that one kind of stops that top left corner from being used. And we're going down to M, basically M minus one so that we're all of these ones. Okay, so we want a very similar structure, PQ dot append the position of I zero. So the first position is I so the row index is changing, but the column index is fixed at zero. And so that's the left wall. We can also do so P scene dot add that position as well. And now we need to do the stuff for the Atlantic. Okay, so let's first worry about the right wall. And we actually will count this bottom right position here in this one. So the whole right wall is going to be for I in the range of M. So going down the rows, we will AQ. So for the Atlantic, AQ dot append the position of I and n minus one. Okay, so the row index is the one that's changing and we're fixed at n minus one, which is gonna be the last column there. And as usual, we're going to a scene, add that position as well. The only last thing is the bottom wall here and we need to ignore the bottom right position. So that means we need to do for J in the range of N minus one. So basically not doing the very last one here that iterates over these ones. So for J in the range of N minus one, we will AQ dot append the position of M minus one and J. So M minus one is going to be fixed at the last row this is m minus one right here and it is j over the column index is the variable one okay so all of these positions right here this is the top row this is the left column excluding the very top left corner this is the right wall including that bottom right corner and this is the bottom row excluding that right corner there Okay, now we're going to write a function called get coords, so that gets the coordinates given a Q and a scene set. The first time we call this, we'll give it the Pacific Q and the Pacific scene set. And the second time we call it, we'll give it the Atlantic Q and the Atlantic scene set. So we'll call this twice, one for each ocean. And what this returns here is coords, which is going to be a set of all of the positions that can reach the ocean that you're talking about. So if you gave it the Atlantic, it would say all the positions that can reach the Atlantic, or if you gave it the Pacific, it would be all the positions that could reach the Pacific. Okay, and so this is going to do a BFS here. So we only have to write the BFS once and we'll just call the function that does the BFS twice, basically. So while we have the Q, okay, well, I and J is a position that is Q dot pop left. You know, we're appending to the right and popping from the left. That means we can use it as a Q. And so we get that relevant position IJ. Okay, it's on the Q because we can reach it. So coords dot add that position IJ. So it's on the Q and we're popping it off because this position can reach the ocean. That's why it's there. So we'll add that to our list of coordinates. Now we need to do our neighbors. So for I offset and J offset in the list of directions for I offset and J offset in the list of zero, one, one, zero, negative one, zero, zero, negative one. So this is one to the right. This is one down. This is one up and this is one left. So those are just an offset, not an actual position. So your R and your C are equal to I plus 
plus your I offset and J plus your J offset. So from IJ, if you take an I offset and a J offset, then you add a new position RC, which is calculated by this. So this new position RC, maybe it's part of the grid, maybe it's not. If you were over here, then maybe you're outside of it. And we also only care about those positions that can flow water to us, okay? Not from us over to them. We need to see if they can flow water to us, which means as long as they are bigger than or equal to us, then you can flow. So that's basically this crazy if statement here. It's a very long one here. If it's in bounds row wise, if R is at least zero and less than M, the row index is in bounds. Is the column index in bounds? Very similar restrictions. And is that new position heights at RC at least heights at IJ? Because remember we're processing IJ, we're seeing a neighbor RC. Is that position in bounds and is it bigger than or equal to us? If it is, then water could flow from that position to us. However, there's even one more thing here and we need to make sure that r and c is not in our scene set because if it's already been seen well then we don't want to visit it multiple times as long as that's true we have a new position rc that could flow water from that rc over to the ij so we'll scene dot add that we saw this position rc and we'll put it in the queue q dot append rc so mark it as seen so we don't visit it again and put that in so that at some point it can be one of these ijs to ask that same question. Okay, so that's how you would do this BFS here. After we're done that, we'd have a set of all of the coordinates that could reach the Pacific Ocean or the Atlantic Ocean, whichever you called it. We would return coords, which is precisely that set. So we'll get P coords, which is a set of all the positions that can reach the Pacific. P coords is the get coords given the PQ and the P scene. And you could just copy paste here and replace it with A. So A coords is the get coords given the Atlantic Q and the Atlantic scene set. After we have these two sets, these are all the positions that reach the Pacific. These are all the positions that reach the Atlantic. We need the ones that can reach both. So what do we do here? Well, we want, I'll just make sure it's a list. So we'll return the list of the P coords dot intersection of the A coords. Okay, these are both sets. And so you can ask what their intersection is. That's going to be all of the stuff that shares both. So if a position is in both P coords and A coords, it can reach both the Pacific and the Atlantic. So it's going to make that intersection and therefore our final list. That is exactly what we'd want to return. And if I zoom way out here, I'll try to get it on one page here. If not, you can check the code in the video description. Boom, that's our code. If you submit that, that will work. Drop a like if you found this helpful, guys. Please drop a like if you actually watched this and understood it. This takes a long time, so I really appreciate it. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great day, and bye-bye.